Hi, everybody. Now we're going to take a different approach to the finite difference method. I'm going to show you how it can be derived from the Taylor series. Uh, for this exercise, we're just going to go through the forward finite difference, but uh, I do want you to be aware that you can derive any of the finite difference approaches, forward centered or backwards finite difference, uh, from the Taylor series. So this is a standard Taylor series. Uh, keep in mind here that uh, h is equal to the separation distance between your x values. So in this case, h is xi plus 1 minus x sub i. Uh, f is the function represented in our uh, graph. So just to kind of make a quick little picture that looks like the graph we looked at and the graphical approach to the finite difference method. Uh, again, we're looking for the derivative at this point, x sub i, and the corresponding f of x sub i value. Oops. So to find that derivative using a, a forward finite difference approach, we would select a second x value, that would be our x sub i plus 1. And the difference or the distance between our two x values is h, or x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. And of course, our corresponding f of x sub i plus 1 value. OK. so. The Taylor series, as I've drawn it, or as I've written it out here, is set up so it looks for f of x sub i plus one, which is the value here. That's the y value at our uh, second x value. So we have two x values, two y values. Now the Taylor series gives us a way that we can calculate our uh, that slope. So before we really dive into that, I um, just want to mention a couple of things about the Taylor series. So the way this Taylor series is written out here, it's actually written out not as a true equality. This is an approximation. To make this a true equality, we would add the truncation error at the end. So the truncation error represents all terms that are not included in our Taylor series. So once we add the truncation error, then this becomes a true equality with a regular equal sign. Now, our truncation error is going to include any of the Taylor series terms that we haven't explicitly written out here. So if we cut this off after just f of x sub i, if you add our truncation error here, that's still going to be an exact equality. It just so happens that in that case, our truncation error contains most of the function. So we can use that truncation error as a way to attempt to quantify the error in our Taylor series. OK. Now, for the process of calculating our derivative or our slope, we're going to truncate our Taylor series by lopping off several of these terms. So in the end, what we're looking for is the derivative at x sub i. So we want to find f prime of x sub i. That's what we're looking for here. So here's how we're going to find that. Just going to take this and toss it off on the side somewhere. We'll be able to find that later. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our Taylor series here. And we're going to truncate it. So we're going to cut off all the terms after our f prime of x term. So all these terms here are going to go away and just become part of the truncation error. So I'll rewrite the Taylor series down here now that we've truncated it. So our Taylor series now is going to read f 
of x sub i plus 1 equals f of x sub i plus f prime of x sub i multiplied by h. Now again, f prime of x sub i is what we're looking for. So now we're just going to solve this for f prime of x sub i. And that's going to give us, well, first of all, we have f prime of x sub i multiplied by h is going to be equal to f of x sub i plus 1 minus f of x sub i. And then we can divide through onto both sides our um, h value here. Uh, before I do that, I left off the truncation error here when I wrote out my Taylor series. The truncation error continues to be important here. So it's very important to keep that in place. So uh, when I did all this subtraction here, what I did was I subtracted f prime of x sub i. I'm sorry, I left that alone. I subtracted uh, f of x sub i under the other side of the equation. And then I also brought my truncation error over. So this is actually going to be minus the truncation error. Now I divide through by h. So what I'll end up with after I've divided through by h is the following. We'll have f prime of x sub i equals f of x sub i plus 1 minus f of x sub i divided by h minus my truncation error divided by h. The reason I separate the h's out is because the truncation error uh, is highly variable. It depends a lot on um, you know, how many of your terms you've lopped off when of your Taylor series, and it depends on what h is. So it's actually, it becomes a function of h. So it's often rewritten instead of as uh, rn over h, it can be re rewritten as a function, which I'll call epsilon of h. So it's a function of the separation distance. So this here gives us Again, our forward finite difference approach for our Taylor series. So we'll call the or, uh, forward finite difference approach for the first derivative derived from a Taylor series. Now, if you look carefully at this, you'll notice that it's the exact same equation as we had when we did this graphically. Um, the difference being we're now including the error function. Now, the error function, again, is just uh, a way to um, rectify your approximation with the exact answer. So the difference between your approximation and the exact answer is going to be this error function. So this gives us a way to quantify the accuracy of our finite difference approach. So we can go through a similar exercise. I'm not going to do this on the board, but a similar exercise could be performed to come up with the backwards finite difference method as well. And I'll jump straight to the end of it, but uh, I do, uh, that's a, a few leaps in algebra to get there from the Taylor series, but I'll have you take my word for it that you can start at a Taylor series and get to the backwards finite difference method. So that would look like this. And again, this is the same equation that we came up with graphically before. So this will be our backwards finite difference approach. Now again, we have our error function in here to represent the truncation error in the Taylor series, which again is the difference between the exact answer and the answer we get from our uh, approximation with the finite difference method. Finally, I'll put the uh, centered finite difference on here as well. So with the centered finite difference, it's actually even more difficult to uh, calculate that from a Taylor series. There's a few algebraic leaps that usually, anytime I want to go through the calculation, I usually have to look up some of these algebraic leaps just to remind myself how we get there and then prove to myself it actually works. Rather than go through that exercise on the board here, I'm just going to again ask you to take my word for it. So here's the function.
Now, in this case, our error function ends up being a function of h squared instead of h. And that's significant because what that means is when, uh, when your error function is a function of h to the first power, like it is in the forward and backward finite difference, that means your error changes linearly with your separation distance. So if you have a smaller separation distance, your error is gonna change linearly with that separation distance. So error, let's write this on here, changes linearly with separation distance. Now, when h is squared, when error is a function of h squared, that means the error changes with the square of h. So what does that all mean? So when I say the error changes linearly with the separation distance, that means if h is cut in half, your error gets cut in half. If h is doubled, your error doubles. So if your, your h is, let's, I'll just repeat that one more time. If h is cut in half when, it's, when you're making a linear change, so we're talking about these guys here. If you cut your separation distance in half, you're also gonna cut your error in half. If you double your separation distance, you're gonna double your error. So that's what I mean when I say error changes linearly with separation distance. With the centered finite difference approach, the error changes with the square of h. What that means is uh, if you cut your error in, or if you cut your h in half, your error is actually going to be cut in fourths. So let's say your separation distance is one and your error is two. I'm just making up some numbers here. If you cut your error in half, or you cut your h, your separation distance in half, then your error, instead of becoming one, is gonna become one half. So the error produces faster when you have a smaller separation distance. So that's the reason that the centered finite difference approach gives you a more accurate estimate. Now remember that I, in the other lecture talking about the graphical approach to deriving these, I mentioned that, again, the centered finite difference is more accurate, but it's more work to deal with. And the reason for that is the, uh, the line that you draw between your f of x values and the centered finite difference doesn't actually intersect your function at the x value that you're interested in. And so there's extra work that you have to go through in order to approach your value. Let me show you that graphically just one more time here. So we'll draw a function. There's a function. Let's say we're looking for the derivative here at this point at x sub i. So if we pick two other points, x sub i minus one and x sub i plus one, it's gonna put us here, good enough. And we draw the line in between them. Notice here that the line that we just drew in purple does not intersect the point where we're trying to find the derivative. Now we can project that line onto that point because it's gonna be tangent at that point, but that's extra work that we would not have to do with a forward finite difference. With a forward finite difference, the line that we draw between the two points intersects our point of interest directly. So that's where the extra work comes in. Now, depending on what kind of problem you're trying to solve, sometimes that extra work might be worth it. Um, okay, so just to kind of bring things back around, I'm gonna write out the Taylor series one more time here. So with our Taylor series, once again, um, you can use this to uh, calculate other derivatives as well. So you could use this to calculate the second derivative. The way you would do that 
is you would uh, truncate your Taylor series here, cut off all that stuff, and then solve for F double prime of X. And that would give you a finite difference approach for the second derivative. Um, there's a little more to it than just solving for that. There's a few mathematical leaps and things that you have to take to get there. But um, eventually, you can solve that. You can solve this to find that second derivative as a function of your x sub i plus 1. Um, and you can do that for a forward, backward, or centered approach as well. There is another method that you can apply using this. So I've shown you the standard finite difference formulas for uh, approximating first derivative. There is a more, what's called the high accuracy finite difference formulas, which again, I'm not gonna go through the full derivation there, but the way the high accuracy finite difference formulas work is, so when the ones we just calculated, we truncated our Taylor series here and just used this part to calculate our standard formulas. With the high accuracy formulas, you include more terms of the Taylor series in your calculation. So for the high accuracy formulas, we would truncate our Taylor series here instead, and then solve for F prime of X. There's a few substitutions that we do, including the, uh, the finite difference value for the second derivative in order to do that. But what this does is it provides a more accurate uh, set of finite difference formulas. I'm not gonna provide those here. I'm gonna post on the Canvas page a table that contains um, finite difference formulas for both the standard formulas and the high accuracy formulas for the first, second, third, and I believe fourth derivative. I don't have it in front of me at the moment. It's gonna do that for the forward, backward, and centered finite difference methods. So you'll have all of these formulas available to you. I'm also gonna post a MATLAB code that contains the formulas, both the standard and, and um, high accuracy formulas for the first derivative that you can then apply to any set of functions. So these are all be available on the Canvas page. <laughs>